It is great to have you join us for the Identity Matters Worldview Institute message called Z Diversity. Identity Matters Worldview Institute is an outreach of IOM America. Hey, feel free to drop in and visit us at www.iomamerica.org. This particular message that we're doing, Z Diversity, it's one of the courses that focuses on culture, politics, and religion. This particular message is a part of the I Am Online Worldview School, which hosts well over 70 courses related to biblical worldview. Our school focuses on addressing issues relating to the believer's identity in Christ, as well as the cultural and political issues of our day. We simply put it as focusing on Christ, culture, and Creator. This particular message is also a part of iGenZ, a new outreach program started by IOM America. Stop in and visit us at www.igenz.org. We'd love to have you visit. Z Diversity. Z Wiz. Things are getting weird in our world today, are they not? Well, I say move over, millennials. The Zers are coming into focus. Generation Z is on track to be the most informed generation yet, certainly the most diverse. Their liberal mindset is putting the liberal views of their parents to shame. Their openness to merging social trends into culture is a new phenomenon that the world has never seen. The definition of diversity is simple. It means understanding that each individual is unique and recognizing humanity's differences. Well, if we stop there, we'd be fine. But there's a darker side and Generation Z is populating it, which includes the dimensions of race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, socialistic economy, age, physical abilities, religious beliefs, political beliefs, and other ideologies. And all these are bundled into the package of Z diversity. The part of this movement has an undertowing belief. Conservatism in any form is racism and or abuse of power. While the ideology of racial equality is healthy, if there's belief somehow that deletes faith from facts, a cultural nightmare is born. Many of the Generation X populace is shocked as to the world's focus on socialism. It's in the news every day, particularly after generations of wars to keep it at bay. It's not only the leading or trending issue of the internet, but governments are also at war internally over this diverse way of leading people. So what happened in such a short period of time? Well, it's simple. Diversity is the mother of socialism. Socialism doesn't work without diversity. And diversity can't mutate without technology, the digital age. Let's take a look at a few statistics. Generation X was the last generation to live and work by traditional conservative standards of faith and work ethics. As soon as the millennial generation separated faith from facts or truth, diversity was birthed. The reason it happened so fast is because the internet is fast. The millennial generation, or also known by Generation Y, reacted to the rules of their parents and formed a culture that demanded freedom and flexibility. They have been accredited to living off the digital accessibility provided for them by the technological giants of Generation X. Statistically, this allowed them to sit back and enjoy the benefits of being entrepreneurs on the now digital age. The millennials were the first generation to dump faith and facts, which formed the pluralistic society 
now globally known as the post-truth era. Pluralism works best in a socialistic system. Now since Gen Z is the children of the millennials, they are known for being spoiled, or to put it mildly, materially endowed. And statistically, this is due to the millennial parents rejecting the traditional conservative practices of providing guidelines and structure demonstrated by their Generation X parents. Since their millennial parents were liberal in structure, Generation Z is the first generation to be raised by the internet, which thrives off of a socialist system. Meaning, Zers went to the internet for education, parenting advice, sexual education, political views, gaming, and image indulging. This is all a result of the Zers' big six modalities of the internet living. One, globally aware, which means they're environmentally alert, they focus on global missions, and global unity. Two, need for speed. Faster, faster, faster. They need those fast answers, immediate information, and social connections. Three, collaborative. They have a need to be heard. They enjoy the opinions of others. And they love fact-finding. Number four, digital natives. They are technological savvy. They are raised in the digital age. And their big focus is online education. Number five, diverse. They are captivated by color, religion, politics, sexual, gender related issues. And finally, number six is micro miners. Bite size information, speaking Genies, and taking shortcuts. All six of these are wrapped in the package of entertainment, meaning their views are adopted through gaming, movies, video shares, and other entertainment media. It is true, Generation Z is the savviest collective generation known to the technological world. According to Pew Research, only 14% of the U.S. adults actually had access to the internet in 1995. By 2014, that number was 87%. Today, that number is 97%. The facts are Gen Z grew up under the modalities of the explosive digital age. It all started with the expansion of internet gaming. It is noted that the gaming expansion technology literally ignited and advanced internet dependence more than any other modality in human history. Ryan Jenkins says this, Having 24-7 access to the world's information by a supercomputer in their pocket has rewired how Generation Z problem solves, networks, communicates, learns, buys, and ultimately how they will show up in the workplace. Now, unlike their millennial parents, Gen Zers, while native creatures to the digital communication tools, actually prefer face-to-face -face communication. Although it must be noted that Gen Z considers the use of social media as face-to-face -face communication due to their VChat or video communications. While new students point to the fact that Generation Z is the demographic cohort more interested in job performance and multitasking, researchers are also seeing how this generation uses technology to shift out of traditional roles in the church, politics, jobs, or on campus classrooms. In fact, by learning from the mistakes of their millennial parents, today many are opting for job experience over formal education, with many of them actually being employed right out of high school. And this is due to their experiential knowledge with technology. When education is needed, they populate the online schools and short courses. They primarily make use of training that is fast and to the point. This statistic is what on-campus colleges are alarmed. If the trend continues, on-campus schools will fade into society. 
While new technology is connecting Gen Zers in different and much faster ways, these changes have formed an addiction of sorts, which is stimulating a new addictive ramification, and that's their obsession over diversity. Digital dependence promotes isolated feelings of loneliness. As a result of this, Gen Zers are eager to accept everyone along with their beliefs. They believe that separating beliefs from the person equals rejection. The statistics are beyond alarming on this. Secondly, digital users are knocking at the door of effects as to how humans relate with one another. The new 2020 term used to depict this demise is the cultural tower of Babel. While it might seem beneficial and progressive, the digital age comes with a double-edged sword. One hand, the world of technology is boosting our ability to be productive, can't argue with that, while the other hand reveals a much darker consequence. This crazy busy world is grounds for the making of a crazy culture. So the facts are, gone are the days of lectures and confronting wrong beliefs. Gen Z students are comfortable responding to their environment. Socialization is critical for their development, but only if each is presented in a digital format. The world's educational institutions are forced to go digital to keep their attention. These adjustments made gathering at a local coffee shop to discuss or debate their world views. With peers, I might add, they tend to confirm or refute their worldview through social media collaboration and technological stimulation. And this madness has created a global problem of reduction of the attention span. Now get this. In 1950, the average attention span per audio presentation, teacher, preacher, was 50 plus minutes. During the peak of the millennial generation, there was a significant drop, actually to that of 15 minutes. After Generation Z grew up enough for us to gather statistics, we were faced with the educator's worst nightmare. An advanced Gen Zer could maintain their attention for five minutes. But regarding an average Gen Zer today, that number is 30 seconds. Online marketers base their ads on 30 second clips, telling us that if you don't get their click within 30 seconds, they're gone. This single ramification set off a global alarm. It's a myth really that Gen Zers learn differently. As a presenter, I not only am tired of hearing that Gen Zers learn differently, it is simply not true. People have not changed their modality of learning since the days of creation. So what's the difference? Gen Z processes information quicker, which gives the appearance that they learn differently. The brain is designed to process information as fast as you give it. All humans are built this way. While it is true that the brain will block emotional responses, if too much data is entered too fast, it doesn't change the learning modality. Here's the facts. Each time the brain receives new data, we are wired to process that data emotionally. If too much input is given without proper time to process, the emotions project a state of retardation, depression. This is why the leading concern with Gen Z is depression and or suicide. The result of our data, the educational system emphasized Gen Z's self-esteem. In the meantime, authentic education took a back seat. And the focus on self-esteem just simply built a very selfish, diverse generation. When it comes to the views of diversity, the two younger generations are more likely than older generations to advocate stuff like Black Month, National Women's Day, National Gay Day. But you never hear anything about National Whites Day, National Men's Day. 
You see, diversity blinds its worshipers. Gen Z is not able to be diverse enough to see the irony of their own movement. Authentic diversity is lost. It has been replaced with a kind of diversity that in and of itself is racist. So could it be that the Gen Zers' parents are responsible for igniting the modern church of Laodicea? After all, it does say in Revelation 3.17, Because you say, I am rich, and I have become wealthy, and I have need of nothing, and you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Well, to answer our question, no, it is not the millennials to be blamed. The Church of Laodicea has been around since the days of Jesus addressing them within the first generation church. Every generation since that day has contributed to this demise. Although the millennial generation is indeed noted to be the most brazen to take action on the modalities of lukewarm, and our Generation Z is now suffering the consequences. As a recent Pew Research Center reported and highlighted, they said this, Gen Z is the most racially and ethnical diverse generation we have seen. Well, why wouldn't they be? I don't blame Generation Z or their parents. I put the full blame on our enemy, Satan. He is relentless in preying on innocent minds and fresh generations. Diversity is killing the conservative traditions of the biblical living. For example, in 1 Timothy 5, 14 and 15, it says, Therefore, I want younger widows to get married, bear children, keep house, and give the enemy no occasion for reproach. For some have already turned aside to follow Satan. Now, here's how that might be interpreted today by many of our liberal thinkers. I want younger people to avoid marriage, abort children, stay away from the house, and give the enemy an opportunity to reproach and join others who have turned aside to follow Satan. The facts are Satan is into all forms of diversity. My question is, how many are remaining to catch this scheme? When I think of the idea of diversity becoming a way of living, I think of the Antichrist, setting up for his three and a half years of global peace. It is in his second three and a half years that he will reveal just how diverse he is not. People in general are stupid, I included. Remembering that stupid is knowing the truth but refusing to take action on it. It seems weird to me that the whole world is filled with intelligent people. And why would they want to help Satan set up the tribulation? Well, I guess stupid is, is really as stupid does. Until next time.